is Nicolas Lang, global leader at Boston Consulting Group Henderson Institute. Nicolas, good morning. Thanks for joining us in studio. Yeah, good morning, Silvia. Um, let's start looking at the AI initiatives from Europe. We don't have this uh, latest detail yet, this is a new proposal yet, but the suggestion highlights a focus on uh, domestic AI tools. Yes. To what extent this strategy is likely to work, given the struggles that we know that Europe has in this space? Well, I think it's a daunting task, Silvia, because uh, if you look at it, uh, I think Europe, and we've done a lot of research on this, is only a middle power when it comes to AI. I think the superpowers are the US and China. Um, just a few facts, uh, the US has eight times the data center capacity than Europe has, has two and a half times the amount of AI specialists than Europe has. And I think, uh, so the new apply AI strategy that should be unveiled tomorrow will be, uh, I think will be very interesting to see how the EU Commission wants to overcome this gap. Uh, I think in Europe what is important is that yes, we have two tech stacks in the world, which is on one side the American tech stack and the other side the Chinese tech stack. We do not yet have a European tech stack. And that's something where what we need to overcome in the years to come. But from your research, do you think that there's enough potential in order to get to that European tech uh, uh, development ultimately for AI as well? Yes. Well, I think there is potential if we manage to get really this talent. Yeah, what do they need to do? Well, I think there are three areas where we need to look at. First is we need to attract talent. I think we've lost thousands and thousands of AI talent to the US. And I think uh, we see kind of shift of tides and uh, talent coming back. I think second is we need to really build up an ecosystem. An ecosystem, when you look at China, when you look at the uh, uh, at, uh, US, I think it's always a combination of tech, capital, and universities. That's what we need to have here also in Europe. And last but not least, and I think that's where Europe can be different, is we need to really apply AI to the industrial processes where Europe is actually very strong. Interesting, because that, of course, also requires a little bit of a boost from European institutions. And in fact, um, in the times that I've been in Brussels, some European officials have told me how themselves, how the institutions are trying to use more AI tools as well in their day to day. Yeah. But let's go back to the global picture. Um, explain to us the dynamics here between the US and China. A couple of weeks ago, we heard the Nick Clegg, who formerly worked for uh, Meta, suggesting that ultimately China is uh, going to be the winner in this uh, AI race. Mm. What do you make of that? No, I think, you know, one of the most historic days of this year is actually January 21st. Why? Uh, because it's the day where on one side we had the announcement of Stargate in US with $500 billion invested. And on the other side, we had DeepSeek announcing R1 model, which is exa the exact opposite of a frugal large language model. Um, and I think, I personally think that we see a bifurcation of the tech stacks. We see a clear American model, mm. which is focused on large data center, very advanced semiconductors, and a very striving uh, tech econ ecosystem. And we have a Chinese model, uh, which is much more frugal, which is based on players such as DeepSeek or Quen models or Kimi. And I think at the end of the day, it will be uh, those two that will be dominating. How does that competition actually impact the AI world? Also, when you think about, you know, how the Trump administration has uh, been looking at reforming perhaps some of the immigration policies, and you've talked about the importance of talent mm. here. Mm. Can the United States fairly compete to some extent with China, given this, uh, the, this need for talent as well? Yeah, we have done some research, and I think uh, the US has been successfully a magnet for talent over the last few but years. But can it continue, uh, is my point. Yeah, I am coming to it, uh, okay. I'm coming to, <laughs> to a second, but let me just share a few numbers that people might not know. One third of all people that work in tech startup, like OpenAI, are actually foreign born. More than 50% of the PhDs in math and science are foreign born. And more than 60% of the top AI researchers in the US are foreign born. So you see that there's a huge slate of very strong foreign born uh, AI talent all along the whole value chain that plays a role. Uh, and I think it will be critical in future to keep them in the country. And I think from that perspective, it's really important to give stability to that group. And group. when you think about how corporates are having to adjust to yeah. this global picture, you know, you, if you think as, about a multinational company doing AI or trying to implement AI, how can their corporate strategies reflect the fragmentation that you're witnessing in geopolitics and adapt to this race? Yeah, look, Silvia, it's very interesting. I talked to hundreds of CEOs uh, throughout the year, virtually or live. 
And the one thing which is very interesting is that they really struggle with this fragmented world. Mm. We, we, the, f over the last 20 to 30 years, we, the world was flat. We had one, one world. And suddenly you have three, four worlds with different regulation, tax, tax, tariff regimes, and so on. And I think what I observe is that companies are really reacting in terms of becoming much more agile and resilient, setting up very strong regional headquarters, defining different t uh, tech stacks, defining different IT strategies to really be able to kind of thrive in this environment. Well, no doubt it's challenging times for corp corporates as well to adapt to this race. Let's see what the EU will announce tomorrow. But yes. thank you so much for joining us today. I appreciated yeah. the conversation. Nicholas Lang, globally, they're at uh, Boston Consulting Group, Henderson Institute.